Just a few days back, I put out a video on Redis being dropped from the Arch Linux repos, along with the story of them swapping from a simple BSD3 clause license, a perfectly fine license, over to a dual license system of RSAL v2 and SSPL v1. It still had that BSD3 clause core, but it was being tied up in these source available proprietary licenses. This change upset a lot of core project contributors, and this spawned another project known as Volki. Volki has become very, very important and is managed under the Linux Foundation, having quite a few corporate users and corporate sponsors. Things like, I don't know, Ampere, Alma Linux OS Foundation, Broadcom, DigitalOcean, Alibaba Cloud, AWS, Canonical, Ericsson, Heroku, Huawei, Google Cloud, Oracle, Snap Inc, and Verizon. So, I think they're doing pretty well for themselves. That's not a... That's not an extensive list. There are other companies as well. Now, I don't think... I had anything to do with what I'm about to talk about in this video. However, the timing is very funny. So a few days back, I started getting comments on that video saying that Redis changed the license again. So I had to talk about it. Now if we go to the Redis licensing overview, we get some beautiful open washing. Redis open source is available as both source available, and OSI compliant open source software. This part here, not open source. This part here is. This is some very choice wording they are using. A user may select one of the following three license options to use Redis open source, starting with Redis 8 and subsequent versions. If you want to use open source, there's only one option, that being the new option, AGPL v3, the server-side public license, SSPL v1, and the Redis source available license, RSAL v2. These are not open source licenses. And they do acknowledge this in a later part of the document. RSAL v2 is not an open source license, SSPL v1 is not an open source license. But this framing right here is done very intentionally to make it seem like they might be if you don't read further in the page. Now, as for the license that is an open source license, AGPL v3 is an open source license introduced by the Free Software Foundation, specifically designed for code that runs over a network and requires users to make the complete source code and any modifications publicly available upon distribution. AGPL v3 is a copyleft license. This means that if you use the source code and create derivative works, those derivative works must also be licensed under AGPL v3 and released publicly. Now, because they've created such a mess for themselves, they need a table to explain their licensing and name changes. So 7.2 and earlier, it is called Redis, it is BSD3 clause. 7.4, it is Redis Community Edition, and then RSL v2 or SSPL v1. And then 8 plus, it is Redis Open Source with RSL v2, SSPL v1, or AGPL v3. Do note, again, neither of these licenses are actually open source, so the only actual open source one to use Redis open source is AGPL v3. Now, the FAQ has some interesting questions and answers in it. Why did Redis add AGPL v3? Some community members were frustrated by our March 2024 license change to the dual license RSL v2 and SSPL v1 because you changed it from being an open source project into a source available or proprietary one, depending on which term you want to use for it. Our license change was in response to the managed service providers who use Redis 7.2 and prior versions under the BSD3 license, but provided limited contributions. The license change forced those providers to face a choice, share their source code according to SSPL v1 license, or move on from Redis. Some chose to move on. By some, you mean the formation of Valky and the loss of major, major corporate users. Um, 
Now, this is the fun thing, right? I understand the concern about limited contributions. Totally fair. At the same time, that is the license of the project. It has been BSD3 clause the entire time. This was not a new revelation that people could just use the BSD3 clause license as the BSD3 clause license is written. Redis has been able to innovate more rapidly in the year following the change and is excited to again provide Redis open source under an OSI approved license. Now, this basically translates to we thought we had a lot more power than we really did and we are very, very terrified that Volki will destroy our business. Please, please, please come back. Please, please, please. We don't want to have a direct competitor filling the exact same goal built off of our code base supported by giant corporations. Also, it should be noted that none of this issue with companies not providing things back, anything like that, was ever an issue with Redis prior to the current CEO, whose entire work history is at companies which take open source software and then make a lot of money off of them, giving limited contributions back. And this is another good one. Sure, but what if Redis changes the license again? There are no plans to change or add to the current Redis open source license configuration because our primary motivation for changing our licenses to RSLv2 and SSPLv1 has now been successfully achieved. We can better align with Redis community expectations. We invested a lot of time to consider different licenses to analyze market dynamics before choosing AGPLv3. Other companies made AGPLv3 an option for their communities as well. Let us be clear, we plan to keep Redis open source under the AGPLv3 license because we conclude that this license suits our business model and license stability is essential for the community. Over the past year, they have now changed the license twice. Technically, the second time wasn't a change, it was an addition of a new license. But why would anybody trust that you're not going to change it again? I, as I said, you've changed it twice in a year. Now, there are two notable blog posts I would like to cover. One is from the current CEO, and the other is from Antirez, the founder of the Redis project. So, let's go with the CEO ones first. Rowan Trollop. The rise of hyperscalers like AWS and GCP has unlocked incredible speed and scale for startups and enterprises alike, but for companies roots in open source, it has posed a fundamental challenge. How do you keep innovating and investing in open source software projects when cloud providers reap the profits and control the infrastructure without proportional contributions back to the projects they exploit? As I said, this is a totally reasonable concern and a lot of people have it. The difference, though, is how you go about solving the problem. Some people solve the problem by maybe having a proprietary version with additional features. Some people solve the problem by offering support and things like that. Others, well, they make the project proprietary and piss off the community. To counter this, companies like MongoDB and Elastic adopted SSPL to protect their business from cloud providers extracting value without reinvesting, also known as using the license as it is written. Redis initially took a different approach, creating Redis Stack as a separate distribution with a different license for advanced features, basically, the proprietary version. While this safeguarded innovation, it also split the developer experience and slowed progress on core Redis. What we really needed was a way to enhance Redis at its core without maintaining two separate tracks, Redis Community Edition and Redis Stack. After I joined the company again, this all happened because of the new CEO and a year of evaluating alternatives, in March 2024, we decided to move Redis to the SSPL license. This achieved our goal. AWS and Google now maintain their own fork, but the change hurt our relationship with the Redis community. Yes, again, they maintain their own fork. This is known as Volki. Um, this has taken a large portion of the Redis market share and on AWS is actually offered cheaper than Redis. So if you're not really sure which one to go with, Volki seems like 
the better default option. SSPL is not truly open source because the open source initiative clarified it lacks the requisites to be an OSI approved license. Yes, it is not an open source license, because it doesn't meet the requirements of being an open source license. I may not be the biggest fan of the way the OSI handled its elections recently, but this is their statement on the SSPL. The SSPL is not an open source license. We've seen that several companies have abandoned their original dedication to the open source community by switching their core products from an open source license like a MIT license, BSD3 clause, things like that, one approved by the open source initiative to a FOPEN source license. So a fake open source license, a basically open washing. The hallmark of a FOPEN source license is that those who made the switch claim their product continues to be open under the new license, but the new license actually has taken away user rights. The license du jour, I, French, I don't know what that means, is the server side public license. This license was submitted to the open source initiative for approval, but later withdrawn by the license steward when it became clear the license would not be approved. From Elliot Horowitz of MongoDB, we continue to believe the SSPL complies with the open source definition and the four essential software freedoms. This is from the FSF. However, based on its reception by members of this list and the greater open source community, the community consensus required to support OSI approval does not currently appear to exist regarding the copyleft provision of the SSPL. Thus, in order to be respectful of the time and efforts of the OSI board and this list members, we are hereby withdrawing the SSPL from OSI consideration. Basically, everybody thought it wasn't an open source license, but they were very, very committed to the fact that this is open source. So they're just like, well, nothing's going to move here. Might as well just start saying it's open source and just not worry about the OSI. If you'd like to read the entire thread discussing why this is not open source, I might have to do a dedicated video on it, but for now, I'll leave this link in the description down below. Open source licenses allow a user to view the source code, but do not allow other highly important rights protected by the open source definition, such as the right to make use of the program for any field of endeavor. By design, and as explained by the most recent adopter, Elastic, who actually since then has made the move over to a GPL uh, the exact same way that Redis is doing now. Uh, I, I feel like they're just literally copying them like word for word in the way they're doing it. Anyway, at the time though, when they did swap in a post unironically titled doubling down on open, Elastic says that it now can restrict cloud service providers from offering our software as a service in violation of open source definition six, Elastic didn't double down, it threw its cards in. This is not to say that Elastic or any company shouldn't adopt whatever license is appropriate for its business needs. That may be proprietary, whether closed source or source available. The open source initiative believes the open source development model is the better way to develop software and result in superior products. But Elastic's relicensing is not evidence of any failure of the open source licensing model or a gap in open source licenses. It is simply that Elastic's current business model is inconsistent with what open source licenses are designed to do. You can replace Elastic with Redis and you basically had the exact same situation up until a couple of days ago. Its current business desires are what proprietary licenses, which includes source available, are designed for. Basically, the CEO came into a project where there was a BSD3 clause license and said, well, we're not making enough money here. Might as well go proprietary, and I'm sure that'll go well. And then it didn't go well, then uh, Valky existed, then they backtracked and added a GPO. Now, here is the post from Andy Rez, the founder of the Redis project. Five months ago, I rejoined Redis and quickly started to talk with my colleagues about a possible switch to the AGPL license, only to discover that there was already an ongoing discussion, a very old one too. Many people within the company had the feeling the AGPL was a better pick then the SSPL, and while eventually Redis switched to the SSPL license, the internal discussion continued. Always keep in mind that the engineers doing real work, they're the engineers doing real work. A lot of them probably are involved in other open source projects and just generally like open source. Corporate on the other hand, well, 
they're going to do everything they can do to make money. I tried to give more strength to the ongoing pro AGPL side. My feeling was that the SSPL in practical terms failed to be accepted by the community. That is a light way to put completely rejected and anytime it is seen, mocked. The OSI wouldn't accept it, nor would the software community regard the SSPL as an open license. In a little time, I saw the hypothesis getting more and more traction at all levels within the company hierarchy. Which is code for people realized we were losing money, we were losing market share, so we probably should do something about that. I understand that the core of our work is to improve Redis, to continue being a good system, useful, simple, able to change with the requirements of the software stack, Yet, returning back to an open source license is the basis for such efforts to be coherent with the Redis project, to be accepted by the user base, and to contribute to a human collective effort that is larger than any single company. So honestly, while I can't take credit for the license switch, I hope I contributed a little bit to it. Because today, I'm happy. I'm happy that Redis is open source software again, under the terms of the AGPL v3 license. Now the AGPL v3 does create a much better problem to have, but a problem nonetheless. Asked over on the Valky repo, future for Valky, now Redis is open source software again. Google and AWS that are sponsors of Valky can't use AGPL, so Valky will continue and it will not be able to backport changes from Redis. So there are a lot of companies out there that don't like to touch anything copy left, anything GPL, V2, V3, or any related licenses. So, yes, it is open source, and yes, a lot of people may consider it, but it's not BSD3 clause, which is what it originally had, which is a very permissive license, which basically allowed you to do whatever you want, one of those things, creating the situation that was created. Basically, the rundown of what's happened here is Redis was going fine, nothing out of the ordinary. The new CEO comes in and then decides to piss off a bunch of major corporate users into sponsoring a fork, that being Valky. Now that fork is established and a lot of people are using it and it's sort of becoming the standard for what Redis was in before. They really want to try and bring back some of those users. But now the Volkey is established, available everywhere, and companies want stability, not a project that'll change its license twice in a year. It's hard to move people back off of Volkey. This is an expensive change to make, and for the companies that already did so once, trying to justify going back again... It's a challenge, right? And I'm sure there are a lot of companies that never left Redis. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't be in business anymore. At the same time, though, I, I just don't see why you would go back to it if you've already left. What will this mean for the future of Redis? Honestly, hard to say. I don't have a time machine. But at least so far... There seems to be quite mixed sentiment, but mostly leaning towards pretty much too little too late. But what do you think? Were you making use of Redis, now on Volky? Did you ever swap in the first place? Did you even know anything was going on? Do you even know what Redis or Volky is and have no idea why you're here? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here. What? These amazing people over here. Check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me, and I don't know what happened with that outro.